With so many options out there, which back to school STEM activities should you be doing with your students? There are those typical one day challenges like build the tallest tower or fly the fastest paper airplane, which is all awesome. Keep doing those activities. But in this episode, I'm going to be sharing with you a different take on back to school activities that you can do in your STEM space. So let's jump in on those creative ideas. I've said it many times on here before, and even some of my podcast episodes are based off of this, but I love a good theme. And my friends can definitely attest to that. There are many times we have done themes for things. And that even goes back into the classroom. And I think back to school is its own theme. I know right now during this back to school time, you have all the prep, all the meetings, getting your classroom set up, which we're actually going to talk about in the next episode, things to do to prep. But when you are ready for that lesson planning and you don't want to feel overwhelmed, what are some things that you can do that are STEM based that will actually work? So these three big main ideas that I'm going to be sharing with you were favorites of my students and the most successful. So let's dive into these three back to school STEM activities that you can do with your students. First are those get to know you activities. And if you are a STEM specialist, and of course, as a classroom teacher, you know how important this is. But even as a STEM specialist, this is something that you can do in your room. Now, there are a couple benefits to this, actually. Think about your students who are coming into your space during this back-to-school time. They're working on that community building and getting to know each other in their own classroom. So the same is true in your space. And maybe you've been doing this for a few years now and you already know all the kids, but they might not know each other in that class setting. Here and there, you might have a class that loops, whatever. But for the most part, they mostly don't know each other when it comes to being in the same class together. So doing these get to know activities in a STEM way is a cool way for them to learn about each other and even themselves and for you that you might not have known before. So how can you do this? How can you do some get to know activities in your STEM space? Well, you can make the experience, of course, hands on. A very, a big top favorite. And I know another STEM teacher that I talked to this summer, this was also a favorite of her students, was an all about me Lego brick build. So I have different questions that I display on the screen and buckets of mixed Lego bricks around the room, or you can give kids their own little buckets if you're worried about the sharing piece. But anyway, they have mixed buckets of Lego bricks available to them. And each of the questions will ask them something. And if it's true about them, they grab that many bricks or that color of bricks. So something like grab five orange Lego pieces if you saw a movie this summer. Now, the way that I wrote these questions was to help them not be exclusive because Okay, movie this summer. Sure, maybe you went to the theaters. Maybe you watched a movie at home. Maybe you watched a movie at grandma's house. Maybe you watched it on your iPad. So that could have a lot of different interpretations and help kids get involved. And while they're digging for their Legos, they are talking to the kids at their table. And then this frees me up as well. I'm talking to the kids. So if you're worried about kids wanting to talk, in your classroom, this is a good way to get kids to talk. And there's also some math extensions too. If you want to get to the rows and columns of the Lego bricks, add that little bit of math piece in there. Um, So I've created those different slides where it's literally like no prep and so much fun. And then of course, once they have all the Lego bricks, they get to build with them. Another thing that you can do, same Lego bricks, you could do this in the same day, is have different items that represent school and students can build those things, like a back to school engineer inspiration. So again, you can display those images up on the screen or even send it to students digitally, and then they can build how they think those items should look with the Lego bricks or whatever building materials you have on hand. 
Now, maybe you'll want to take your back to school STEM activities in a digital way, which I am all for. I love a mixture of paper, but also a mixture of digital. This works really well if you have devices available in your classroom, or even if your students are one to one and they are carrying devices into your room. This is a good way to sneak in those little tips when it comes to logging into technology, because I know that that can be a whole struggle in itself. And any extra work with that in the STEM space, you're definitely helping out the classroom teachers as well. So you can assign a digital activity that will help you get to know your students in a STEM way. The first way is going through, and you could do a different letter a day. This actually would work really well, a different letter a day, but go through what STEM means and you have a different slide, one for each letter. And you as the teacher, this is what I did, add up on the screen, the slide for science. And there was a big picture of me. Now it was funny. The kids were like, who's that lady? I'm all, that's me guys. So that was a good introduction. <laughs> and then this was for the letter S in STEM for science. And we talked about the things in science that I really, really like and what science means. And so I had things up there like, oh my gosh, I love I love sea, sea lions. They are my favorite. They are like what slippery puppies raise your hand if you also like sea lions. I'm like, awesome. Good job. I also like the solar system. It intrigues me. I probably would never want to go in space, but I love learning about it. Hands up, thumbs up if you agree with me. So things like that where they got to know me, that was the introduction. And then they got to complete their slide as well. And it also embedded those skills like logging in, getting to the assignment, and also inserting an image in text box, which are really good skills to have because that can carry into different platforms. Likewise, another one that I did with older students is we did an apps about me activity. This could be printed too, but adding in those digital components is really, really fun. And the students really love this and learn new things from each other. So with this one, there is no coding involved, but you send the kids a template that has different apps, I'm putting in quotations, but different apps that they are going to create and they are all about them. So one of the apps, one of the slides that they are designing is the food ordering app. And if they could have their perfect menu and where things are delivered from or they are served, what would that app have? So learning their favorite foods. So those types of things are really great. Um, I actually mix these in throughout the week. So day one is where I'll really focus in on a get to know me activity. And then I might cycle this through even the second month I see them. I've talked on here that I had kids five days in a row. So I had the same five kids all Monday through Friday, but I would mix those in throughout the week. So if it was a fast finisher, if they were finished with that part, they could go and work on this project throughout the week. So it's good to have that on hand. And then kids are even working on it in their classrooms, which is awesome. They were super excited about this activity. Another back to school STEM activity that you can use in your classroom is outdoor learning. More likely than not, you are going back to school and the weather's still hot and nice. And kids have been used to playing outside. So why not take that to your advantage? I've talked about this before here on the podcast, specifically back in episode four, but that is STEM Survival Camp, one of my most favorite units that I have ever taught and also love sharing with teachers. And this was kind of a happy accident. Go back and listen to that episode. You can hear how I actually started STEM Survival Camp. And I actually didn't start my year off with this. I used to do digital citizenship, which we'll talk about, super important. But this was an awesome, awesome way to start off the year. So if you haven't heard of STEM Survival Camp, all of these challenges involve things where students are collecting items from outdoors. So you are providing a few of the makerspace materials, but the majority of the things they are finding outside. And if you even want to, depending on where you live, you could have students build outside. So that's a really great bonus as well to be out in the fresh air because most of us in the STEM space are in classrooms without windows. <laughs> so 
the different challenges K through five are different things that if they were left alone out in the wilderness, what are those types of things that they would need to know how to do to survive the elements? So we start off with kindergarten, cross the river challenge, first grade, design a fishing pole, second grade, second grade, protect the food challenge, third grade, design a game from the land, because if you're out alone, your your phone's probably going to die eventually, and you need to stay entertained. Fourth grade's a little bit different. They actually learn a life skill, and they are designing a hiking backpack, so I actually teach them how to sew, hand stitching. And then fifth grade is the build a shelter challenge, where they design a shelter to withstand the elements. So lots of different fun things going on. So every grade has a different challenge. And again, some of the materials are from outside, some are the things that I provide them, which is a great way to embed how to use materials in the maker space. It is not a free-for-all for this challenge. In fact, it never usually is a free-for-all entirely. But with this one, I have very specific materials that they have the option of using in addition to the things that they find outside. And this helps them learn the management of those things, like managing the tape allotment that you have, how to cut tape, how to measure string that you need for your design. So those types of things are really helpful with minimal tools so that they're still being creative, but creativity with constraints. Another great thing, too, is that this naturally promotes that collaboration and creativity and in a hands-on way. So I'm not telling them, all right, be creative good luck. Here's how you should design it. We're looking at examples from the real world, showing examples that past students have done and having them work together to complete this challenge. Likewise, if you are hoping to teach the engineering design process as the process that you're using in your classroom when it comes to project learning, then this again is another way to go through those steps where I'm not saying, all right, ask is a step of the engineering design process. Imagine is the next one. It's all embedded in there. So I'm all about embedding things and having it come to life instead of having things in isolation. And this whole unit is definitely a way to do that. And bonus, if you're already setting up your classroom anyway... I actually would set up my whole classroom as a camping theme. So again, go back to episode four. I tell you all about it in there. And the last back to school STEM activity theme that you can try in your classroom is all about digital citizenship. This involves quite a few things and you don't need to do this all at once. It's overwhelming for you as a teacher, but it's also overwhelming for the kids. They're tired at the end of the day. There's a lot of new information coming at them. So put it in bits by bit by bit that will make sense for them. So in the long run, they can be successful. Back in episode 10, I talk about the top technology skills that your students need to know, and these are perfect for what you can do throughout the week or the first couple of months of school where they are handling technology appropriately. So it's just those basic things like things like how to manage your headphones, things like that. Where are they stored in your classroom? Are you having students bring those in from their homeroom classroom? How is that working in your class? I actually have little mini lessons tied to these and little technology badges that they can earn physically or digitally. So that will be linked in the show notes for you. So you can actually see see. And even some of them, I have like the videos of me teaching them like cleaning devices, things like that, where your students can hear or you as a teacher can hear the language and then present that to your students in your own way. Also, don't forget your classroom rules. I think have fun is kind of a weird rule. I don't think it should be a rule to have fun. It might not be fun all the time. You might be frustrated. That's not fun. But think about your classroom rules. And a few of them actually might involve technology. So I have some kid-friendly posters that I use with my students K through five. Again, linked in the show notes for you. Maybe your school or district is thinking about having a device contract for using devices or borrowing them. You might need to talk through those types of things. Is that part of your role or do you need to reiterate? that in your space. I have an editable one that you can grab that has a great starting point. Also some posters that go along with that. So some reminders when they're using technology, what are those things that they need to do? 
And finally, what do you need to do as a teacher? Now, this isn't really you teaching, but I just wanted to put this in there. Think about your own digital citizenship, and maybe you are in charge of the school-wide technology. I was also that I talked about that in the last episode. That was a big part of my role is that I was the technology person. And so think about those things that teachers need to know and that they can be successful. And I highly, highly recommend doing this. I know it takes a little bit of work up front, but if you can find videos or you can record videos of you answering commonly asked questions, then this is going to save you time in the long run because you have that on that checklist. And then if teachers are asking you throughout the year, especially if it's things that are related to things that they're working on with students, then you can send them that video link again or say, oh, it's over here on this checklist. Here's the link to the checklist. So then that's ready to go. So I'm just putting that in there. That's a side note. But keep that in mind because this is something I would resend to people all the time because I already answered it. So there is that resource for you. I am like Google apparently. So here's that, here's that link that'll help you out. So back to the kids, you have those basic technology skills that you were constantly teaching and reteaching. And this goes the whole year. This isn't going to go away, but keep that in mind. That's something that you are doing starting out with back to school. But then you also want to get into those digital citizenship lessons. How are they interacting with the online space? Again, that is something that is not going away. Um, That is something that kids need to learn how to be successful, and they might not be learning this at home. So think about those very specific digital citizenship lessons. I do have an episode all about digital citizenship that can help you out with this. When you're thinking about my year and how the order of things that I taught, I started off the year with STEM survival camp, so having that collaboration and working on the engineering design process, all that fun. Then the second second month was specifically about digital citizenship. I actually used to teach digital citizenship as a unit first because STEM Survival Camp didn't exist yet, but then I actually switched it to month two and it worked so much better because the kids are settled into the school year. The teachers are ready to use more technology and they were ready for these types of lessons. So there's some great resources out there, but I'm thinking about adding a STEM twist. How can you make these lessons interactive and hands-on? So I created different things that go along with private and personal information. How can we be kind online? What does it mean to have safe websites that we can explore? So those types of things in a hands-on way is really beneficial to really make it stick in their brain. Hopefully the classroom teachers are talking about this too. Maybe you are a classroom teacher and you're like, oh, I need to talk about that. But hopefully this is just in another way, how can you reiterate this very, very important information? If you are wondering exactly how I lay out my year, the order of things, what grade levels get what, you can download my year-long plan for absolutely free, and you can grab that at naomimeredith.com slash year-long plan. And this, again, will be linked in the show notes. As a recap, here are those three back-to-school STEM activities that you can use in your classroom. First are some get-to-know-you activities and have your STEM twist. Next is outdoor learning. Take those kids outside. It's probably still nice out. And finally, different ways to teach digital citizenship. All of these lessons that I have talked about are linked in the show notes for you, and you can grab those individually if there's a specific one that you really, really loved, or I've also bundled them up nicely so you can have a whole collection of things, especially if you teach a lot of kids, you need a lot of stuff. If you want to hear about more back to school STEM activities, you can actually go to episode seven, where I talk about more things that you can use in your STEM space. Thank you again so much for being here and I'll see you in the next episode.